and welcome back. Today, in this episode, what I'd like to do is talk about the morphology or the shape and appearance of galls in a way that you can talk about them uh, to other people and if you are keeping notes and you can you can use this to to identify them and the other thing um, I'd like to talk about is studying galls and how to collect them and what to do with them and how to deal with them as a as a hobby or as a study so as we look at galls and try and talk about them the literature uh, kind of gives us some ideas. Uh, there's descriptions of galls uh, that are found that are called uh, fold galls, roll galls, witches brooms, buds, cigars, pineapples, rosettes, pits, blisters, pouches, and they all attempt to describe a, a certain shape uh, with a gall. I think it's um, perhaps more useful to talk about a couple of different ways of looking at them. The first is, are they integral or are they detachable? For example, this gall is coming right out of the stem and is no way you're going, going to detach that from from the stem. On the other hand, this series of galls are protruding directly from the leaf. And that's uh, another category. Is it a stem gall or is it a leaf gall? And is it integral as we saw here? Or can it just be detached? If you were to grab that gall and pop it off, there'd be no problem. This is kind of an interesting combination where this gall is definitely integral. It's built right into the twig of the tree. And you can see some of the exit holes where the uh, gall insect is left. And then over on the leaf, a whole different set of galls, which are detachable. So we have uh, detachable leaf galls there and integral stem gall here. And another way you can talk about galls is whether it is monothalamus, in other words, sort of one big chunk of gall versus multithalamus. This particular one um, from a gambel oak, uh, you can see has many kind of lobes, I guess you would say. I've cut this open and you can see here uh, the number of uh, gall chambers that um, are in this gall. So uh, multithalamus and monothalamus. That's a little about how galls look. I guess you'd say the morphology of them, the shapes and so forth. Now, uh, I'd like to move on to, I guess you'd call field work. Once you have um, know what they look like, then how do you find them in the field? And then what do you do about it after you find them? When you walk in the forest, walk slowly. Look around you. Look for anything unusual, a different shape, a different color, just anything unusual that catches your eye then stop and examine it closely. You may have found a gall or you may have found something else interesting. So you have found a gall, there are a number of options open to you. You can appreciate it for what it is, where it is. You can photograph it or draw it, or you may choose to study them more deeply, collecting and documenting your finds. In order to do this, you'll need several pieces of equipment. The first thing you'll need is some type of bag or container in order to keep your collections and your tools. The bag should have uh, a small notepad, a pen or a pencil to write with, and some kind of collection container. I've used these 
plastic boxes for a while. I cut a hole in the side and then put some type of permeable material like cheesecloth on there uh, so it can breathe. If it can't breathe, it will rot and it won't be a happy situation. Sometimes the galls will be collected at the right time to where within a period of time, somewhere between one day and one month, uh, the gall insects and perhaps other insects, as we'll talk about in the next episode, will begin to emerge. There's a couple of different strategies you can use to collect these uh, insects. One is a container such as this with uh, uh, that is sealed uh, uh, container. Um, see some gall insects that I've collected here. Um, you may use um, contact lens cases. That's what I've used in a lot of cases. They seem perfect for this type of work. If you uh, are very careful and watch for a gall to emerge and you actually see them emerge live, you can place them in ethanol, which will preserve them indefinitely. Otherwise, they, again, they will deteriorate. I misspoke just a moment ago. The insects will emerge from the gall within one day to one year, not one day to one month. One other item or tool you may want to have is a dissecting or low power microscope. This is great for getting a much better look at the gall insects and the galls themselves. You can actually do some dissecting work with some of the galls where you can uh, dissect them under the microscope and really get a good idea of what the gall chambers are looking like, what the larvae look like, and um, all manner of uh, attributes that, that are found within the gall. The last thing I'll say about collecting is please be conservative in your collection of galls. They are a living creature. They have a lifestyle. And as we'll see in the next episode, it can be a pretty tough life cycle. So uh, enjoy it, have fun, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode.